Hello, I wanna thank you for joining us today at the Department of Labor and Industries for our 28th annual Worker Memorial Day event. My name is Joel Sachs and I'm the director of the Department of Labor and Industries. Worker Memorial Day is a meaningful event for all of us here at LNI. It's a day to reflect and remember those who died from work-related injuries or sicknesses. Ordinarily, we'd all be together, gathered around the bell, in person to honor fallen family members, friends, co-workers, and heroes. Well, nothing about this past year has been ordinary. Last year, the pandemic forced us to cancel this event. This year, we're able to hold a virtual event, and I wanna thank you for attending. To those of you who lost a loved one in 2020, I offer you our heartfelt condolences. To my LNI teammates, who work hard every day to prevent tragic workplace fatalities, and those of you who work directly with the families of the fallen heroes, I know how personal this day can be for you, and I know that each of the lives that we honor today are important to you. The work that you do is crucial. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to keep Washington workers safe. Joining us remotely with the invocation is Pastor Jeffrey Jones. He's the chaplain and religious coordinator at the Department of Correction Center in Little Rock. Greetings and let us pray. As we gather today, we are first thankful for the time we were able to share with our loved ones, the endless memories and moments that will forever live in our hearts and minds. We take this time to reflect and remember what is best. We pause to honor these men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice. We move forward in hope and love, never forgetting those who we have lost. So we ask for continued comfort, sustainable peace, and enduring will to press through the difficulties. We accept these challenges knowing that our hearts are filled with love and their memories are forever with us. Continue to be an ever-present help and source of comfort as we go forth. We pray this in thy son's name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jones. For some of you, this may be the first time you've heard of Worker Memorial Day. Organized Labor established Worker Memorial Day nationally in 1989 to remember and honor fallen workers and to recognize the anniversary of the creation of the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. Worker Memorial Day events occur in communities and work sites all across the country and around the world. L&I 
has hosted this event for more than two decades. Usually we're in person, but COVID-19 has taken so much from us. Still, it's important that we didn't lose this opportunity to pay tribute to those workers who died on the job. Most of them woke up one day, went to work like any other normal day, and tragically didn't make it home. At L&I, our event is a bit different. It's a joint observation that includes government, organized labor, and the business community. Being together symbolizes Washington's cooperative approach to creating safe workplaces. I'm pleased to now introduce a leader and partner who works tirelessly each and every day to keep workplaces safe, our governor, Jay Inslee. Governor, I'd like to thank you for your passion and commitment for keeping us safe and healthy in these incredibly challenging times. Hi, Jay Inslee here. I want to say that I'm honored to join you all today in paying tribute to the workers who've lost their lives in 2020. And the fact that we aren't able to be together for this important event in person is a reminder of just how tough this past year has been. Uh, no one can attest to that more than those of you who've lost a loved one, obviously. It is so pain painful that uh, of more than 100 workers we lost in Washington last year, two dozen of them passed away after they uh, contracted COVID-19 while working in hospitals and long-term care facilities, prisons, food processing, and more. These people cannot be considered statistics. They matter. They went to, went to work to provide for their family, to fulfill their passion, to fulfill an obligation that they made to their community. And they lost their lives in the process. The youngest, Jonathan Sadnovic, was just 20 years of age. A young man full of promise and obviously with much to offer the world. Others had worked their whole lives in anticipation of retiring with their loved ones, only to have their dreams cut short. The oldest Washington worker to lose his life last year was 98-year-old William Lillibridge, who passed away from lung disease caused by years of exposure to chemicals in the construction industry. It's devastating to all of us that workplace accidents and illnesses can happen at any time in any industry. Our state has come a long way in improving workplace safety, but in remembering those we lost this year, we must recognize there's still so much work to be done. And it takes all of government, business and labor to make sure employers follow the rules and protect their workers. We cannot let up on our efforts to prevent all workplace deaths in all types of businesses. And every year that I attend this event, I'm reminded of the critical role each and every one play in ensuring workers make it home at the end of a hard, work, a hard day's work. Now, we're taking action to enforce the laws of the state of Washington in this regard, and sometimes that's controversial. But we need to stand up for worker safety, and we tend to do that. So we want you to know we're going to be remembering your loved ones, and we will honor them with continued effort to protect workers across the state. I want to thank you. Thank your loved ones. And please take care. Good luck. Thank you, Governor Inslee. Our next group of speakers represents workers and employers. We're going to also hear from the mother of a young man who lost his life on the job and what she's doing to protect other workers. We'll start with Matt Saxon. Matt is the president of the Washington Self-Insurers Association, which educates policymakers, regulators, and employers on statewide workplace safety and workers' compensation issues. He's also the senior manager of risk and safety at REI. Thank you, Governor Inslee and Director Sachs for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Matt Saxon, and I'm the president of the Washington Self-Insurers Association. On behalf of WSIA and the self-insurer community, I offer my sincere condolences to the families, friends, and loved ones of those we have lost on the job this past year. In 2020, a new term entered our everyday vocabulary, essential worker. 
in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, essential workers provided medical care, kept food on our tables, and worked to keep necessary services available all during a public health emergency we have not seen in our lifetime. For this, we should hold these workers in reverence and gratitude, especially those we have lost to the pandemic. I offer you this personal reflection that I carry with me as a safety and health professional, that every worker is an essential worker. Each are working to secure a better future for themselves and many times for their families. Through their work, they touch our lives in ways we do not know, but we benefit from. Each worker deserves a safe and healthful workplace so they can pursue their goals, whatever they may be, without the risk of serious injury or worse. No one should have to go through the pain you're experiencing from your loss. And today is a reminder that we have much work to do. We must continue to work tirelessly to protect all workers and hold on to a vision that someday this gathering will be a celebration, a celebration of what is possible if we work together to protect Washington's workers. Thank you again for allowing me to be here today to honor those we have lost. Thank you, Matt. Now, please give your attention to Larry Brown, president of the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO, the largest labor organization in our state. The council is a nonprofit group dedicated to improving workplace rights for working people and their families. Hello, everyone. My name is Larry Brown and it is my honor to serve as president of the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. On behalf of the 400,000 rank and file union members that the Washington State Labor Council represents, I wanna thank the Department of Labor and Industries for hosting this event each year. Having our state government, labor and business all together for this solemn occasion is an excellent reminder that we are all in this together. And it's a reminder that striving to keep workers safe and healthy is literally a life and death issue. The challenge has been put in stark relief by the COVID pandemic. Until recently, our partners in the federal government absolutely failed in their duty to protect American workers. As people were exposed to a deadly virus at work, OSHA refused to issue any temporary emergency standard to keep them safe. Instead, we got voluntary guidance and no enforcement. That left it up to the states and to unions and business to navigate the pandemic. Despite our best efforts, too many lives were lost from workplace COVID exposure. Bus drivers, grocery workers, correction officers, meat packing and food processing workers, and of course, healthcare and long-term care workers. These are people who put themselves in harm's way so that the rest of us could survive this ordeal. The good news is that the public has a newfound appreciation for the folks now known as essential workers and the work that they do. Of course, they've always been essential and it's always been our obligation to keep them safe. That obligation will not end with this pandemic. As Mother Jones said, we must mourn the dead, but fight like hell for the living. Today, we honor the memories of fallen workers over the past year. Tomorrow and each day moving forward, we must rededicate ourselves to keeping all people safe and healthy. Thank you, Larry. Now let's hear from Chris Johnson. Chris is the president of the Association of Washington Business the oldest and largest statewide business association. Its mission is to be the unifying voice for economic prosperity throughout Washington State. Hello, my name is Chris Johnson, president of the Association of Washington Business. In some respects, it feels like 2020 changed everything. How we work from home instead of the office, whenever possible. How we shop online instead of at the store how we gather over Zoom instead of in living rooms. But sadly, one thing didn't change is the need for this annual Worker Memorial. Amid a year filled with historic challenges in our nation and world, 
2020 was also a year of heartbreaking and private loss for far too many families who experienced the death of a loved one from a work-related cause. And so on behalf of the nearly 7,000 employers who are members of the Association of Washington Business, we extend our heartfelt sympathies and we join with others throughout the state in pausing to commemorate this Worker Memorial Day. Our mission at AWB is to promote economic prosperity throughout Washington State for every community, in every industry, and for every person. That means creating good paying, safe jobs, the kind of jobs that build communities and lift up families. Until the time comes when there's no need for a remembrance such as this, we will continue to dedicate ourselves to workplace safety and health. Employers, labor, and government are united by this common objective. Everyone deserves the opportunity to find work that provides economic prosperity and to come home safely at the end of the day. We are grateful for each one of the men and women we remember this year. Men and women who went to work, pandemic or not, to supply the goods and services that each of us depend on. And we're reminded in a time like this about what is truly essential. Our prayers are with those who we remember today, along with their family and friends. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Thank you, Chris. Our next speaker reminds us just how fragile life can be and that the work that we do here at LNI is crucial. Tina Meyer's son, Cody, was just 23 years old when he was working as a flagger and a distracted driver hit and tragically killed him. Her moving story and her call to action is an inspiration. Hello. December 15th, 2015 started out as a normal day. I got up, had breakfast. I gave my son his lunch and off to work he went in his brand new head to toe neon yellow reflective rain suit. He was working as a flagger um, for about a year. Not what he wanted to be doing, but he gave his all every day and tried to stay positive. All the signs were up. Road work ahead, prepare to stop. Flagger ahead. Unfortunately, those signs don't stop distracted drivers. Our son was hit by a man driving while distracted by his cell phone. Cody fought for his life for 140 days before he lost his fight. How do we continue the day to day we fight back? I worked hard on changing the distracted driving laws and I speak. I speak at schools, I speak at community meetings, I speak to you. I have found that, for me, telling Cody's story helps me. It's why I try every time, if I can't stop one person from going through the same pain that we've went through, then I've helped. I know Cody wouldn't want me to sit at home in pain day after day. Today, I have, we have special days that we honor him but we also have a two-year-old grandson that reminds us so much of him, the mischievous son that we lost far too soon. He is his uncle's image in so many ways. I ask that you try to find a way to work through your pain because holding on to it is just pain. Channel it into something positive. That's what Cody would have wanted. Thank you. Tina, thank you. We're grateful to you for sharing your story and reminding us that it can wait. That phone call, that text message, that social media post, it can wait until we're not driving. So now it's time for the traditional ringing of the bell and the reading of the names of the workers who died in 2020. Every name we read represents a person, a family, a community. The names we read today are moms and dads, grandmothers and grandfathers. They're brothers and sisters and sons 
and daughters. There are friends and there are neighbors. Joining our speakers for the reading of the names are Venetia Runyon, an industrial hygiene compliance manager with the Division of Occupational Safety and Health here at LNI, and Jane Hopkins, a registered nurse at Harborview Medical Center and the executive vice president of the Service Employees International Union, the largest union of healthcare workers in the nation. This past year, for frontline and essential workers, the pandemic has brought additional risks to the workplace. Nurses especially have witnessed some of the worst this pandemic has brought on, working to save our lives while also taking on so many unique daily challenges caused by COVID-19. Jane, thank you for joining us today. Jaime Alcaraz Jazar, 53, agricultural worker. Jose A. Alfaro Flores, 35, farm machine operator. Robert S. Allen, 45, chaser and choke setter. Clea P. Averio Ume, 57, medical records director. Robert E. Ahmed, 59, instrument laboratory. John D. Anderson, age 50, patrol lieutenant. David R. Armas Sandoval, 27, laborer. Daniel Arandondo Garcia, 53, carpenter apprentice. Stephen S. Bailey, 68, firefighter. Elijah L. Berlan, 27, healthcare worker. Kristen S. Benson, 42, caseworker. Howard P. Benzel, 67, landlord. Nigel A. Burley, 38, machine operator. James A. Borndahl, 49, mason worker. Jordan A. Blankenship, 22, flagger. Mark A. Bloomberg, 65, counselor. Hector M. Bracamontes Godinez, 47, mechanic. Robert D. Brown, 51, truck driver. Douglas G. Wamu, 39, anesthesia technician. Ivan E. Cardenas Puente, 34, truck driver. Luther Cavender, 92, pipe fitter. Cherno A. Cisse, 28, Uber driver. David A. Christensen, 62, Corrections Officer. Carolyn S. Clark Bennett, 54, Associate Principal. Charlie Cortez, 29, Tulalip Tribal Police Officer. Juan C. de Santiago Rincon, 37, Orchard Worker. Sergey Diakin, 56, Operator. David O. Dory, 75, Brick Mason. Loretta D. Dowling, 45, Caregiver. Earl Edwards, 63, Orchard Worker. Curtis J. Ingot, 49, police officer. Cesar O. Ayaso, Jr., 28, 
production shipping operator. Ruben Fadas Lopez, 41, logger. Bradley C. Fisher, 63, millwright. Stephen L. Fisher, 62, radiation technician. Jonathan B. Frasse, 44, truck driver. Lucida R. Frere, 67, caregiver. Brian J. Gallivan, 55, arborist. Matthew P. Gilbert, 41, construction. Donald J. Grigsby, 70, truck driver. Carlos A. Guerrero Pachuca, 29, tractor driver. Katrin L. Haley, 39, night concierge. Daryl J. Hammerly, 73, diesel mechanic. Ronald D. Hansen, Sr., 70, insulation worker. Nip C. Hickey, 85, lineman. Andrew J. Inskeep, 44, youth pastor. Herberto Jimenez, 65, drywall installer. Dale H. Johnson, 21, truck driver. Robert R. Jalsma, 29, laborer. Nathan M. Judd, 28, tree faller. Kurt W. Julian, 63, ICU nurse. Isatu Kumara, 63, Certified Nurses Assistant. Negendaram Kundasami, 64, Store Clerk. Mary J. Noblick, 68, Office Manager. Rebecca M. Lawton, 35, Nurse. William L. Lillibridge, 98, construction. Joseph M. Llewellyn, 23, welder. Thomas H. Longton, 71, school bus driver. John A. Lund, 58, construction inspector. Justin M. Magleby, 29, electrical lineman. James M. Marchand, 62, heavy equipment operator. Edwin D. McClanahan, 88, scientist. Joshua McCormick, 25, instructor pilot. David J. McDougall, 74, logging owner operator. Billy M. McQuiston, 88, agriculture watermaster. Jose Medrano Obiangran, 53, contractor owner. Tristan G. Miller, 46, receiving clerk. Bartolo F. Montes, Sr., 60, tractor driver. Dean L. Moore, 57, salesman. Jose Morales, 50, roofer. Beresford A. Morse, 65, Corrections Officer. 
Lourdes Y. Nixon, 61, Certified Nursing Assistant. Daniel G. Oaks, 58, Corrections Officer. Jose Guadalupe Oliveira, 60, Butcher. Ruben Pacheco Lopez, 59, Orchard Foreman. Suzanne R. Paget, 50, State Trooper. Clifford R. Page, 72, Machinist. John E. Parker, 54, Construction Foreman. Conrad G. Peterson, 86, Farmer. Rodney A. Petroff, 64, Tow Truck Driver. Sensei Fonte, 56, Senior Technician. Darlene G. Raffleson, 65, Firefighter. Julieta Ramos de Gracia, 67, Courthouse Security Screener. Dwayne G. Rankin, 83, Engineering Technician. Arthur C. Rhodes, 76, real estate agent. Philip A. Rico Buono, 88, radiation engineering assistant. Earl R. Richardson, 60, corrections officer. Miguel A. Ruiz Camacha, 34, warehouse laborer. Jonathan P. Sedofnik, 20, granite business owner. Justin R. Schaefer, 28, state trooper. Jonathan P. Shoup, 32, police officer. James E. Simpson, 28, youth guidance specialist. Bobby D. Skillet, 52, machine operator. Brian L. Smith, 54, farmer. Mikhail D. Solomon, 70, Auto Service Advisor. Richard D. Squibb, 67, Aerospace Quality Assurance. Jonathan F. Stringer, 24, Construction Laborer. Zachary C. Stewart, 34, Electrician. Ishmael Suarez Serrano, 43, agricultural laborer. Diana R. Tacardin, 72, heat sealer, etcher, decorator. Mark R. Thornton, 65, glass cutter. Gregory A. Titus, 60, tree faller, logger. Bernardo Toralba, 50, meat processor. Chi M. Tran, 73, housekeeping supervisor. Stanimir Zenkov, 48, maintenance service manager. Robert P. Ulbricht, 77, pipe fitter. Christian F. Arudia, 27, painter carpenter. 
Fidel Arudia, 52, owner, painter, carpenter. Max Giovanni Valverde Kaiser, 44, farmer, labor. Gary M. Vandalac, 74, generator, operator. Maximo Vasquez, 63, nursing facility cook. Arthur A. Vasquez, 58, fire and rescue captain. Jorge A. Biafon, 60, farm foreman. Keith Walburn, 61, maintenance supervisor. Terrell G. Wattenberger, 55, sheet metal foreman. J. G. Wheeler, 57, lieutenant firefighter. Thomas B. Witt, 75, truck driver. Andrew W. Young, Jr., 56, Dairy Farmer, Lilia Segadia, 20, Concierge. Please join me for a moment of silence to remember the fallen workers. Then please stay tuned for a rendition of Amazing Grace by Puget Sound Firefighters Pipes and Drums. Each year, during the moment of silence, I pause and reflect on each of the names that we heard. And sometimes I'm gonna reflect on the personal stories from the surviving family members that I also had an opportunity to hear. Listening to Tina Meyer talk about her son Cody's tragic and unnecessary death hits me in the gut. He was just 23 years old with his whole life ahead of him. I'm inspired by the way, Tina Meyer has turned her grief into action, working to change the, the distracted driving law to make things safer for other workers. Now, it makes me think about what I can do to make things safer for workers. 
What is it that we can do collectively to make sure no one else's name is ever read in a ceremony like this? At L and I, we must look at how these workers died. It's our responsibility to investigate the circumstances and most important, to learn from them. And, and that's our commitment to the family members of the victims and to every person who goes to work each and every day in our state. In today's ceremony, we come together to recognize the people who are gone, to remember the way they lived and to honor their legacy. To the family members and friends of the fallen heroes we honor today, I want you to know that we're here to try to understand your loss, your pain. I want you to know that we care. And I assure you that we're working to see that it never happens again. Mourning with you reminds us what we must do tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. Because we know in our hearts that every workplace fatality is preventable. No, we can do better. We must do better. And today, we come together to promise each other that we will do better. Let's all strive toward a day where this bell is silent. As we close today, I would like to use a benediction that I found from a friend, Cynthia Landrum, and it reads as follows. We leave this gathered community, but we do not leave our connection, our concerns, our care for each other, our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues. Until we are together again, friends, be strong, be well, be true, be loving. Go in peace. Amen. I offer sincere thanks to everyone who took part in our virtual Worker Memorial Day tribute today. Governor Jay Inslee and all of our honored speakers, Pastor Jones, the name readers, musicians, and our own l &I staff. And of course, the families who are joining us today in remembrance of your loved ones. It certainly has been a difficult and challenging year. Still, there's hope. It lies in our commitment and unwavering dedication to preventing any more people from being injured or killed on the job. By doing so, we can ensure the people that we honor here today did not die in vain. Thank you, be well, and be safe.